Hi there. The 150th district is represented by Mike Pacino is our representative, and he is joining us from Greenwich and here at the state capitol for this edition of Meet the Leaders. I'm David Smith. Good to have you along with us. And Mike, always good to see you. Pleasure to see you. And uh, somehow you're keeping a, a smile about you, and uh, that uh, gets tougher and tougher and tougher. Tough to everything. do these days. Tough but, to do uh, these days. But, you know, as, as people reflect, and, and the budget has always been the big, you know, the great elephant and so forth, but a lot of stuff goes on here yeah. that kind of is off to the side and people don't notice as much, and yet those people who are affected, which often affects lots and lots of people, yeah. notice and appreciate the good work that you all do on now, both sides of the aisle. No, this is true. This is true. It's, uh, uh, a lot of things go uh, unnoticed because the budget is looming. And, and there's so many, I mean, there's so many bills that come out. There are, what, 4,000 bills, oh, something 4, like that. Bills, and only a few hundred yeah, see the light to, of day. Trying to stay on top of each one is a challenge in really, its own. Really? But yes. uh, we've, been, we've been fortunate. We, we, uh, we passed some comprehensive bills, uh, one being the firemen's uh, bill of cancer, um, so helping those firemen. So that was. That, that is a big. Can you explain to, to our, our viewers a little bit more about what that entails? Because it, it does make a big change in yeah, a lot of people's lives. Yeah, it's a big change. It's, it's, uh, so, what it does is now it'll help those uh, firemen who enter into those uh, burning buildings, um, exposure to the chemicals, um, those things that are cancer causing. But you never know what you're being exposed to when you go into something I mean, like they're, that. They're amazing individuals just in the fact exactly. that they're willing to put their lives on the line to do the job that they do. Um, but the thing that we forget is that they're also exposing themselves to um, highly toxic you know, chemicals at some times, um, fumes and things of that nature. So we're fortunate that we were able to pass some legislation that would, would um, uh, help them in the long term if they ever were, God forbid, stricken with some sort of cancerous disease. And something what would that mean? There, that there would be a insurance coverage, the insurance there, coverage, whatever they the compensation. Um, it'll be limited to, again, those individuals who are certified for entering into those particular fires and, and uh, uh, that sort of a situation. Uh, it'll be uh, something that is is not. The burden won't be on the municipalities which is good mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it's just it's in a long time coming we've had parties working on both sides of the aisle really up all night making certain that all the legislation was done correctly um, so we're very proud of that and we've had some other major you know major accomplishments that do go under you know the radar yeah. you don't yeah. really find out too much about so well that is very exciting have you been hearing from your from your constituents uh, about you know, what they perceive is going on here, because I don't think it's very difficult for constituents to understand yeah. what you're doing and what is going on here on a daily basis. Now, the focus really was, you know, with the cuts that were pr proposed by the governor's office for ECS funding was, was something that really raised a red flag. It, it was it, an unfortunate proposal because so many municipalities already have gotten into their budget cycle and they've, they've concentrated, you know, they, they've done the work and now to have these funds that they were expecting to be in there be taken out really was an un unfair um, uh, uh, proposal. So we've been working hard and diligently to make certain that, at least from a Republican standpoint, that we're able to put those funds back in, keep them flat for a couple of years, try to work on long-term structural changes, things of that nature that will really help the state become saleable again mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's it's we, we spoke with our realtors came up the other day and they are saying you know it's the Connecticut is is such a wonderful state but it's a hard sell to these days to people when you have Florida looming and some of these other states that are uh, uh, no income taxes so we've got to make it saleable again we've got to make it the state that people want to be in um, and and there's a lot of challenges to it getting back to you know our constituents um, you know, fortunate that we've got some really uh, intellectual constituents, people that really, they, they keep their finger on the pulse of the state because it's affecting them. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and Connecticut really does have some, some wonderful residents in, in, in all aspects of, of, of the state who are aware of what's taking place. You know, there's a pretty good marketing campaign that the state has been doing on focusing on those businesses, those uh, entrepreneurs and, and others. Yeah who are, you know, saying, hey, this is, this is where I want to be. This yeah. is where my people want to be. 
You've got a great quality of life here. Absolutely. And you've got some amazing people that we can depend on and we can count on to be there for us to help us out. Yeah, and absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping that that's bearing some fruit because it makes a lot of sense. Well, I think so. I think that we're making strides. Um, we do have you know, some uphill challenges. Uh, it's just we're hopeful that everyone can come together at the same table to figure out what's best for the state of Connecticut. As you look forward to the next session, is there any one thing that you would like to see accomplished? I'd love to see the estate tax repeal. I'd love to see that go away to really incentivize people to stay here in this great state. I'd also love to see a little bit more relief to the hospitals. Um, and most importantly, we'd love to see that the funding get back in place for those the most vulnerable. There you go. Mike Pacino, thank you so much for thank being with so us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you stopping by, that is for sure. Always interesting to get the insights of your legislators on this program. And from Meet the Leaders, I'm David Smith.